exactly. Well, my stick yes. stuck. Moving around, so might have been. <laughs> Great way to start it. All right, guys, and the stream has started. So let's go ahead and give a little bit of introduction as to what we're going to be doing today. Today is going to be Harrier Training Day with the Sluggers. Uh, basically, we have a whole list of things to cover today from vertical takeoff and landing tips to short takeoff tips to air to air refueling, slicks bombing, uh, snake eyes, rock eyes bombing, uh, what, uh, basically everything under the sun that we can cover in a single session. Uh, we are going to do our best to follow the list so that we have a little bit of structure to the session today, but uh, you know, if things start going off in their own directions, that's okay as well. First topic is going to be vertical takeoff and vertical landing. Let's go ahead and leave them as they are now. You currently have, how much fuel do you have? You have about 60% fuel and no loadout on your, on your weapon stations. So you should be plenty light enough to vertically take off. So let's go ahead and walk you guys through the process of vertical takeoff. All right, so if you guys are not aware already, to vertically take off, you need to be under uh, 24,000 pounds, ideally much further under than that because the carrier's engine pr produces roughly 24,000 pounds of thrust, assuming it's wet. Uh, what I mean by wet is, is if you have the H2O switch set to the takeoff position. Uh, so ideally, you should be actually at around 23,000 pounds so that when you vertically take off, your water will start getting injected into your engine and you'll have enough time to actually transition to forward flight. But for us today, because we are at like, looks like 19,000 pounds, we really don't have to worry about that. So uh, to start off, before you take off, there are a few checks that you need to make sure that are in place. So obviously one is your aircraft needs to be started, so that's one. Your flaps need to be engaged and make sure they are set to the bottom position, the short takeoff and landing position. Right. You want to make sure your H2O switch is set to the up position or the takeoff position. And what you'll notice is that if you're light enough, sometimes your hair will actually start to move in its place. Because the kind of idle thrust is so high that it actually moves the Harrier forward a little bit with your nozzle set to 10 degrees. So to combat that, go ahead and lower your nozzles down to about 50, 5 zero. And then you should stop moving. In addition to that, your flaps will also drop down to 62 degrees of flaps. I see you guys playing around with your nozzle settings. All right, with everyone set to 50 degrees, let's do a double check. So first off, we want to make sure your Harrier's on, obviously. Flaps are powered on. Flaps are down to the short takeoff and vertical landing position. Your water is set to H2O for takeoff. Uh, your master mode should be VSTOL. And just double check on your HUD that everything lines up. Nozzles should be at 50 degrees. And look at Desto over here. I'm assuming that's Desto trying to show off on the screen. Your flap should be <laughs> should be down to 62 degrees because your flaps are at 50 degrees. And if that is all set, let's go ahead and move our nozzles all the way back to 85 degrees. Now, keep in mind the uh, NATOPS manual says you should actually set it to 82 degrees. In practice in DCS, if you want a perfect vertical takeoff or you have no forward or backward momentum as a result, uh, you will want to set your uh, nozzles to 85 degrees instead. Who knows, maybe that's actually inaccurate, maybe it's a flaw of the simulator, I don't know, but in practice in DCS, that's what I found as the ideal nozzle setting for taking off. All right, I've got my nozzles now set to 85 degrees, if you guys are set. So uh, as far as the takeoff procedures are concerned, obviously we really shouldn't be doing this on the parking area. Ideally, we should actually be doing this on the, for example, the uh, runway itself, but because we are in DCS, we really don't care that much. Yeah. All right, so the other part of the takeoff procedures before you take off is as you are uh, increasing your thrust, you want to make sure your brakes are engaged. So make sure you have your toe brakes on if you have a button set for that. And that's actually a little tip. Even though you have your water on, it's not actually being used until your computer determines it actually is needed for your current temperature. 
So let it do the math and just have it on just in case. All right, guys, and that's it. So let's go ahead and tow brakes on and start throttling up until you start getting into the air. Once you start ascending into the air, you want to raise your or slowly push your nozzles forward very slightly so you start getting forward momentum. Then as you start doing that, raise your landing gear and then just slowly push your nozzles forward even more. Your goal is to make sure your vertical speed is always in the positive. So if it ever drops below, uh, just move your nozzles back to a more vertical position. Wait for it to start climbing back up again and then slowly push it forward again. There you go. The one who's ascending, go ahead and raise your landing gear. And then slowly push your nozzles forward. Make sure you keep that vertical speed in the positive. Full thrust if you need to. There you go, just like that. Remember, put your, nose, your nozzles back to the vertical position when you need to. If you're putting them forward too quickly, just gradually put them forward. Very nice. Good job, guys. All right, you two. What's, what's, uh, what's the hold up here? You got this. Slowly push your nozzles forward and then look, raise your landing gear. There you go. Now slowly push them forward. Get that forward momentum going. There you go. If you start dropping, point your nose up if you need to. And then just slowly keep pushing those nozzles forward. All right, last one. Who's here on the ground? That's right, I'm looking at you. Uh-oh. Yep, spotlight's on you now. Full thrust. Max thrust. Slowly push those nozzles forward. No, no, max thrust all times. All times. Raise the landing gear. Max thrust. Slowly put those nozzles forward. Are you at max thrust? I feel like you're just trying to hover now. Uh, I might be. <laughs> there you go. I can see your nozzles. I can see you using your water because I see all that smoke. There you go. Nozzles fully forward. All right. Perfect. There you go. Good job, guys. All right, I'm going to take off as well to demonstrate it from my side. So, tow brakes on, powering up. Watch, I'm the one to crash. Slide forward momentum going. Raise landing gear and then push nozzles forward. And there was actually a very critical step I forgot to tell you guys as far as the takeoff procedure goes. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure your flaps are in the auto position. Uh, the general rule of thumb is once they implement flap damage as a result of engine thrust, you'll want to make sure when you're uh, transitioning to forward flight that once your nozzles hit 25 degrees, stop pushing them forward, look down at your flap switch, put it to auto, and then put your nozzles to forward flight after that. Because if your nozzles are any more shallow than 25 degrees, you will potentially burn your flaps off. So you want to be careful about that. Again, it's not currently implemented in DCS, so you don't have to worry about it right now. But in the future, if they decide to do that, you'll forever wonder why you are no longer able to use your flaps because you took off the wrong way. That's good information. It's also a nice combat trick at the moment to just extend your flaps to VTOL in the middle of a fight. Yep. Though, that with that being said, you can uh, let the auto flaps take care of that for you, but it is a good way to just suddenly decrease your speed, because at a slow enough speed, they are essentially gigantic air brakes. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and circle Anapa, and we'll go over the process of vertical landing. You guys excited for this? I'm excited for this. All right, this is my favorite part of the Harrier. Oh man. This is where it normally goes wrong for me. Oh yeah, that's the plan. All right. Two joysticks to grab, I'm not excited. Oh yeah, I have two joysticks too, but I, I one's not connected to the computer. All right, so 
As far as vertical landings are concerned, you'll basically want to do a standard uh, kind of airfield approach for a landing, but instead of doing a conventional landing, you'll change your nozzle positions so that they are in a vertical uh, kind of orientation. So 82 degrees or 85 degrees, it really depends on you. And your goal is to basically come to a stop above the runway as opposed to landing on it while running. All right, so just go through your normal uh, landing procedures. We'll do this one by one. So let me take a look at the F-10 map. I'm gonna do a circle around the airfield. All right, let's see, who is going to be the lucky one to go first? Deadpool, let's go ahead and demonstrate a proper vertical landing. Uh, you told me I was here to, to demonstrate the improper ones, but okay. Yeah, 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 that's fine. If you want to demonstrate an improper vertical landing, go ahead. That is totally up to you. Be up to you. I'll try to watch you from the external. Maneuvering towards lawn dark. <laughs> awesome. All right, so just to describe it, once again, this is going to be your standard uh, landing circuit. So you'll pass over the runway, do an overhead break, go into your different portions of the landing circuits. So you'll go into crosswind, go into downwind, to turning for base, then turning for final, then finally final. And when you're on final, instead of landing conventionally like Deadpool is currently attempting to do without landing gear down. Wait for it, wait for it. Okay, all right, all right, that's fine. So instead of landing conventionally where you're landing while running, you will eventually come to a hover above the runway and then simply touch down straight down. This is looking very much like a conventional landing, Deadpool. Wait for it. <laughs> uh, there it is. And he just touched down while running. That was a failed vertical landing, guys. Don't do what he did. All right, who is next? Who would like to go? Jawa, you're next. Hell yeah, brother. All right, buddy, let's go ahead and see how you take care of this. Are you familiar with typical landing patterns on a, uh, at an airfield? Do sure. you Do you know what overhead break is? Do you know what downwind is? Do you know what base, final, all that jazz is? I do not know what the overhead break is. All right, so basically you fly along the uh, kind of parallel to the runway, but you want to be a bit closer than you are to it. And as you pass, over the runway, you want to do, do a hard break left to kill your airspeed, and then turn to downwind. Downwind is when you're running, running parallel to the runway, but opposite direction of where you're going to be landing on the other side of the runway. Roger. Does that make any sense? It did. All right, cool. So when you're about three quarters of the way up the airfield, that is when you turn left across it, you want to be at about, uh, I would say about a thousand feet or something like that. Okay. All right, go ahead and do an overhead break. There you go. Just start per pulling left and go perpendicular to the airfield. Okay, go ahead and level out as you're perpendicular with it. Cross over, go about, I don't know, I'd say about a mile in this direction and then turn left again. Give me a second, I'll let you know. And let's go ahead and start now. There you go. So you are now turning for downwind. This is the opposite direction you would actually be landing from the runway, and you're on the you're currently running parallel to the airfield strip. So just remain parallel. Now look over your left shoulder. If you see where the kind of threshold of the runway is. Your goal is to make it so that when your head is about 45 degrees looking back at you, that's when you start turning in for your turn for base. So not okay. just yet. It's when you have to look far enough back that it feels like you're looking back at about a 45 degree mark. I would say probably, probably about now. yeah, about now. Start turning for base. And while you're turning for base, assuming your airspeed is low enough, this is when you start thinking about dropping your landing gear and deploying flaps. There you go. Now, for your nozzles, go ahead and rotate them down all the way to 50 degrees, and then adjust your thrust accordingly to keep you in the positive vertical speed. 
Now start turning for final. And then increase thrust to maintain your altitude. Also, go ahead and set your water to the landing position, which is the down position. So the water switch needs to be in the down position. Set. Great. Now increase that thrust. Make sure you have uh, positive vertical speed or just stable vertical speed. And continue on towards the runway. What should my nose be pitched at? Your nose, so do you, are you familiar with what the witch's hat is? Yes. Make sure that's at, at around negative two degrees. Okay. All right, go ahead and line up with the runway. And as you line up, go ahead and change your nozzles to about 65 to 70 degrees. That will slow you down even further. Then as you pass the threshold, change your nozzle angle to 82 to 85 degrees. Okay. Coming up on the threshold now. This is looking pretty good. All right, nozzles at 82 or 85 degrees. It's up to you. Now, keep adding power. Make sure you are at a zero vertical speed. So you are not descending and you are not climbing. There you go, you can pitch your nose up to slow down. Just keep that vertical speed at zero. Try to maintain stability. Once you feel like you've stopped moving, pitch your nose back down to negative two degrees. There you go, and then slowly put her down. Wheel brakes on. Right before you touch on, wheel brakes on, and power down. Very nice. That was nice, very good. All right, put your nozzles to 10 degrees and then continue off the runway. Go ahead and take off if you want to take off again or just pull off the runway. It's up to you. Watch that. All right, cool. All right, so I'm going to refuel really quick and kind of just demonstrate the actual landing procedure. So for the sake of the camera. Unfortunately, I'm down to about 200 pounds because I've been hovering here. So, Tuvash, did you tell him about the slip indicator on the nose? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, would you like to do the honors? So, if you guys are wondering what that leer, a little triangle thing, it looks like a wind vane on your nose. This guy right here. Go ahead. That is your slip indicator. Your slip indicator in your aircraft loses all power when you slow down because it's run off the uh, pitot tube. If there's not enough pressure going through that pitot tube, that slip indicator on your gyro will not work. So you have an external slip indicator that's run by the wind. And if you turn your lights on at night or right now, and when you lower your landing gear, there is a green uh, green light that goes on to the back of it, too. Okay, that's cool. So anybody fly the gazelle? Those lights. Huey dog. So it's that... Uh, that try a wind vane is this like the string on the gazelle yeah so basically it's just kind of there to be in a place where you can see that wind is blowing in a particular direction you're essentially in a harrier because it's very difficult to vertically take off as is to make it easier you want to make sure you are taking off into the wind so you want to make sure that's uh, slip vane is centered and pointing forward uh, in addition to the actual physical position of that vein, another way to indicate where it's currently positioned is actually on your HUD as well. If you look at the bottom of your HUD, you'll see three vertical lines with a circle and a C in the middle. The C indicates that the slip vein is currently centered. And your goal is to make sure when you take off, that circle is as much in, uh, around that center vertical line as possible. Because that means you are taking off into the wind. All right, and Napa traffic, two boss and a Harrier AVAB entering traffic for runway 22.
Probably about 2,000 feet. Is there a uh, nose wheel high gain? Is yes, there is. For that, You'll... you need to deactivate your anti skid and set it to NWS. Vaz currently on crosswind for runway 22. Uh, thank you very much. Two Vases downwind, runway 22. There's the, th there's the threshold. I'm waiting until I'm about 45 degrees from that. And roughly right about there. All right, turning for base. Some below 220, there we go. Landing there, there, Landing and 50 degrees. Uvas is turning for final. Uvas on final for runway 22. No pressure. And no pressure at all. I'm controlling my airspeed to make sure my vertical speed is within controllable parameters so I can still see the vertical bar like the graphical representation of the bar is still visible and clearly seen. I'm now increasing my throttle to move that further up as I approach the threshold, pulling the nozzles back to 85 degrees, and then once I pass over the threshold I'll start zeroing out my airspeed. My Witch's hat is now at 2.5 in the negative degree position. I'm now pushing it above the horizon so I could slow down while continuously adjusting my throttle so that my flight path marker is right at the horizon or my vertical speed is at zero. I'm just keeping my witch's hat nice and calmly right above the horizon until I slow down. There's no race to doing this. All I'm really focusing on now is keeping my nose at the same spot while my vertical speed is at zero. Now that I'm more or less slowed down, I'm moving my nose back down to negative 2.5 and letting my flight path marker drop below the horizon just a bit. I know, I know I'm at a controlled descent rate now, so I'm just going to increase my throttle so that it maintains at about 200 to 150 feet per minute as it descends. And right as I am about to touch down, I decrease it even further to about 50 feet per minute, then right as I touch down, I will go full idle. Toe brakes on, and touch down. Move the Amazing. nozzles, move the nozzles to 10 degrees. And get out the way. <laughs> and there you go, that's how you do it. All right, is there any questions about the vertical landing procedures? That was very well done. Thank you, thank you. One thing you probably want to do as well is raise your flaps back up to the auto position after you've uh, gotten to position where you could get off the runway. And you also want to make sure your water is off because the idle power with water on is actually pretty significant and it will make your uh, your aircraft a little unstable on the ground, at least more so than you're used to. All right, boys, so that concludes the vertical takeoff and landing portion of this training session. How do you all feel? Better. Good. I just joined. Jealous. <laughs> Jealous. Yeah, that was a sexy landing, dude. Uh, you haven't seen anything yet. 